tonight, the new superintendent of Harlandale ISD sits down with KSAT to talk about how he plans to lead a district that's under state investigation. A new report released on the Bear County Jail shows areas in need of improvement. And a new adulting hack tonight. We'll talk about how to make the most out of your Google searches. Thanks for joining us for KSAT News at 9. From here in the KSAT 12 Newsroom, I'm Myra Arthur. New leadership amid an ongoing state investigation. A new superintendent in Harlandale ISD is hoping to move the district forward. It's been under investigation since 2017. The Texas Education Agency launch began looking at Harlandale ISD after questions about how the district handled its contracts arose along with allegations of nepotism and an alleged violation of the Open Meetings Act. But the superintendent says that is in the past as far as he's concerned, and he wants to make sure the district is on the right track. Tonight, Tiffany Huerta sits down with Gerardo Soto to talk about his focus. We're moving forward uh, with business here at Harlow. Moving forward, that's the focus Harlandale ISD's new superintendent is taking. I want to impact students' lives in a positive way. Gerardo Soto has been in public education for 25 years. 16 of them have been with Harlandale. Since taking office in December, Soto has been busy. We are looking ahead. We're looking at, at, at uh, some budget items. He's also tackling a district that's been under investigation since 2017. The Texas Education Agency looked into how the district handled its contracts, along with allegations of nepotism and allegations of violating the Open Meetings Act after receiving multiple complaints. A preliminary report in 2018 recommended replacing not only Superintendent Rey Madrigal, but also the entire school board. The TEA also recommended placing a conservator to oversee the district and lowering the district's accreditation status. The district disputed the TEA's findings, but a final report last year made the same recommendations. Madrigal eventually left the district, leaving Soto to handle what comes next. As of right now, we haven't heard back from TA. Soto says there's been changes. There are three new school board members. Two of the seats were up for re-election in May of last year. The third seat was appointed after a trustee resigned last year. So for now, Soto says he'll focus on how he can improve the district. Hopefully, we reduce the class size of our elementaries. Uh, you know, uh, uh, the smaller group settings and for our kids. We're looking at some summer education for, for our elementary again, and we're looking to, uh, to revamp early childhood. Soto says there are challenges, including declining enrollment. We need to again showcase all the great things that we have here. And whether the district can move past the TEA investigation. It's not over. Uh, they, they still, uh, you know, they still have to do, uh, they still have to follow up with us as a district and as a board. But again, as we have to move on for the business, we're here for the, for the school children. The TEA says the investigation into the district is still open and it could take years to be complete. The agency says it is not required to finish an investigation in a specific time frame. Myra. All right, we'll follow it. Thanks, Tiffany. The Bear County Jail passed its annual inspection in January, but a report released by the Texas Commission on Jail Standards found some areas in need of improvement. Here's a look at some of the highlights. Multiple inmates were observed in holding cells up to four days while in leg restraints. Some sanitation issues were also found, including fruit flies and gnats in cells. And the report says a small portion of jail staff were also past due on suicide prevention training. Last year, the jail failed its annual inspection, and as a result, Sheriff Javier Salazar appointed a new jail administrator back in October. The jail then passed a surprise inspection in November. A teenage brother accused of killing his teenage sister in New Braunfels. The number of troops now diagnosed with a traumatic brain injury in the wake of the Iran missile strike keeps on growing. It now tops 100. And four children in Alaska rescued miles from home in a blizzard. Here's tonight's 9 at 9. In New Braunfels, police have accused a 17-year-old boy of killing his 16-year-old sister. Zachary Barretta is charged with first-degree murder in the shooting death of his sister, Gabrielle Barretta. I can't imagine what the, the family's going through, you know. We lost two kids in one day, you know. Today, the Kamal Independent School District offered support to students dealing with the death of a Canyon High School junior. As far as Zachary Barretta, school administrators tell us that a felony charge is an expellable offense. 
Heavy rains in Brazil's most populous city are causing some big problems, including floods and mudslides. Some areas of Sao Paulo completely impassable. Some people had to be rescued by rafts or helicopters from the tops of cars. Now, word that more than 100 U.S. troops have been diagnosed with traumatic brain injuries after Iran's missile attack in Iraq. That's up significantly since the end of January, when the Pentagon said 64 service members had been diagnosed with injuries. The Pentagon and White House initially said no service members were hurt or killed in that attack. Four boys are recovering in Alaska after getting lost in the snow. They were on the edge of the Yukon Delta National Wildlife Refuge in freezing temperatures all alone. The youngest child, just two years old. Search crews found them 20 miles from home and were able to save them. Two of the boys were treated for frostbite. An early morning two alarm fire at a construction site in the medical center barely missed spreading to University Hospital. The fire started this morning while crews were demolishing an old walkway. The San Antonio Fire Department believes the fire was accidentally sparked by a torch. An Alabama man arrested accused of pulling a gun and firing a shot because kids in his apartment complex were being too loud. No one was hurt. The man has been charged with six counts of reckless endangerment. Here at home, a proclamation announced honoring court reporters. The mayor and council designating this week in their honor. It's the reporter's job to produce an accurate written record of a trial or any legal proceeding that might need a record. We are writing on that little machine. We're writing everything everyone says. Not only that, um, we're also identifying the speakers. And they must be able to write 225 words per minute. Complicated and often challenging. It's not an easy job. But whatever the case, a court reporter always has the best seat in the house. NASA is planning a new historic mission. The space agency says a new spacecraft will try and snap the first pictures of the sun's north and south poles. The solar orbiter has been custom designed to handle the sun's heat. It was made to withstand temperatures of over 900 degrees Fahrenheit. An Arizona police officer gives his retiring canine partner a heartwarming send off. Bruno has been with the department since 2013. Trained in narcotics detection, he's helped seize more than $1 million worth of drugs during his career. His handler gave him an ice cream sandwich as he received a radio last call. This transmission is for P9 Bruno. He has just finished his last shift on duty and is now headed for retirement. Thank you for your seven years of service. Thank you for all your hard work and for making sure your handler got home safe every night. To read more about these nine stories, go to ksat.com. Well, good evening. I'm meteorologist Sarah Spivey with a look ahead at a pretty busy forecast. You know, today was a bit of a transition day for us. We were able to really see these clouds kind of stick around in a few areas of showers. In fact, we saw just over uh, about a quarter of an inch of rainfall at the airport. The high was 73 degrees, but temperatures have really started to fall behind that front. Currently, we're sitting in the upper 40s and low 50s up in the hill country at Bernie Stage Airfield. It's 46. 49 in Lotus, 53 officially at the airport, 52 down at Stinson. But this is a big change from yesterday. Take a look at these 24 hour temperature uh, differences for 20 to 25 degrees cooler than how we were yesterday. So definitely a big change. And there on the radar, you can see some of the rain that we got earlier today. But right now, the only thing that's kind of left over are spits and drizzles of rain, and that'll continue overnight. The possibility for drizzle. Here's that system that moved through earlier. You can see that cold front, which is currently working its way closer and closer to the RGV. But for us in San Antonio, we're going to stick with the cooler air for the next 36 hours or so, all because of that very cold air moving in from the north. Winds will be from the north up to about 20 miles per hour into tomorrow. Take a look out across Arizona and Southern California. You see that counterclockwise spin? That's our next system, which is going to bring us even better chances for rain, especially Tuesday night and early Wednesday morning. Now that low pressure system will gradually move closer to San Antonio, but in the future cast, what you'll notice is again just the possibility for uh, areas of light rain and drizzle through tomorrow. Those clouds and that those 
areas of drizzle will keep temperatures very cool tomorrow. In fact, we'll struggle to get out of the 40s for most of the day, so definitely it's going to be chilly. Then watch how the future cast really starts to show more organized showers and even a few rumbles of thunder by early Wednesday morning. Again, that is our best chance for rain Tuesday night and Wednesday morning. Tomorrow is just going to kind of be gray and damp and a little dreary outside. Starting off at 47, still in the 40s by the lunch hour, topping off in the low 50s, near 50 degrees. Northeast breeze at 10 to 15 miles per hour will make it feel a little bit colder than what the thermometer reads during the day, so make sure uh, to prepare for tomorrow's sweater weather. Again, in the rain chances, you can see the dramatic difference. Tomorrow it's just going to be light rain, but Tuesday night and Wednesday, that's when we have the best chance, Tuesday night and Wednesday morning. Then by Wednesday evening, we're totally done with the rain. So we've got this brief window of opportunity for some good soaking rain, potentially up to about an inch of rain in many places, and we need it. We're under drought conditions. Even Del Rio, which is under an extreme drought right now, has the possibility for about half an inch of rain. So hey, I'm looking forward to it. Summing it up in the seven day forecast again, drizzle and sprinkles tomorrow. Best chance Tuesday night and Wednesday morning becoming sunny. Our temperatures will warm up into the mid 60s, but because of a reinforcing shot of cold air, even though Thursday and Friday are going to be sunny, we're only going to see a high temperature near 60 degrees. Then for the weekend, expect mostly cloudy skies. Myra. All right, thanks, Sarah. In just hours, New Hampshire voters will vote in the very first primary of the 2020 election. Here's a look at the new Quinnipiac University National Poll. It shows Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders as the front runner in the Democratic presidential primary for the first time with 25% support. Vice President, former Vice President, rather, Joe Biden in second with 17%. Then Michael Bloomberg, Elizabeth Warren, and Pete Buttigieg round out the top five with 15, 14, and 10 percent, respectively. Meanwhile, here at home in less than 24 hours, we will be releasing the results of the first Bear Facts KSAT Rivard Report poll. More than 600 likely voters in Bear County were polled on nearly 30 questions, all about local issues that matter to them most. Our Steve Priester is hosting a live stream tomorrow afternoon from 2.30 to 3.30 to discuss those results. Look forward to that. You're watching KSAT News at 9. We'll be back in just one minute. Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton is asking the U.S. Supreme Court to strike down a 2016 California law that banned state-funded travel to states with discriminatory laws. The Texas Tribune reports that Texas is on California's list, all because of a Texas law that lets adoption and foster care agencies refuse child placements on the basis of religion, potentially disqualifying LGBTQ families. Paxton released a statement saying in part, quote, California is attempting to punish Texans for respecting the right of conscience for foster care and adoption providers, end quote. Texas is one of 11 states where California bans state-funded travel. A new federal bill would make it easier for military members transitioning into the civilian workforce to land jobs in STEM. That's science, technology, engineering, and math. The Supporting Veterans in STEM Careers Act would make National Science Foundation programs available to vets and coordinate it with other federal agencies to boost similar courses. These programs teach transitioning vets everything from IT material to traditional learning skills they'll need when they get into the workforce. Resume writing, how to dress, from wearing a uniform to wearing uh, the type of civilian clothes, the terminology that will be used from business owners and hiring officials. 
The bipartisan bill passed both the House and Senate and now sits on President Trump's desk, ready for his signature. Let's turn now to some of tonight's biggest stories. A Ronald Reagan high school student found unconscious in the school's weight room has died. Reagan's principal sent a note to parents saying the student was found at around 2.30 this afternoon. Staff members attempted life-saving measures, but unfortunately that student did not survive. San Antonio police are now investigating this as an apparent suicide. Counselors will be available for students who need them. The coronavirus is now deadlier than the SARS outbreak from the early 2000s, with the global death toll passing 1,000. Meanwhile, more than 40,000 people have been infected. Here in our area, Metro Health issued a statement to let the public know that there are no known cases of the coronavirus in Bear County. The number of people who recently returned from China are under a 14-day self-quarantine as a precaution, but none of them are showing any symptoms. The Department of Justice has charged four members of the Chinese military with a 2017 Equifax hack. The DOJ says the breach affected millions of Americans' data and is one of the largest computer hacks in history. Equifax released a statement saying in part that the hack was an attack not just on Equifax, but U.S. consumers as well as the country. Everybody knows what Google is and how to Google, but not everyone knows how to maximize their searches. In tonight's Adulting Hacks, RJ Marquez tells us about some helpful tips and tricks to make sure you Google like a pro. You probably use Google every day, but did you know the search engine has a bunch of tricks to help you find what you're looking for more efficiently? Here are a few. Use quotation marks to search for an exact word or set of words. This is pretty helpful when you're looking up song lyrics or a phrase or maybe a quote from a book. Use the minus sign before a word that you do not want included in a search. For example, when you search Spurs, you get the information from our team and the soccer club in England. Just put a minus sign before Tottenham and you will only get news from our NBA team. Type the word site and then use a colon to search for something within a specific site. Think of this as a Google search that searches only a particular website. Use two periods between two numbers to search for a range of things. This could be used to search for information or a list about a movie decade, measurements, and prices. If you want the meaning of a word, type define and use a colon. This is basically an online dictionary. Google will even search the web to define slang words or acronyms like LOL. And something fun, you could play the classic Atari game Breakout by searching it on Google. The legendary Brick Breaker game can be found when you search Atari Breakout on Google Images. For The Nine, RJ Marcus. Adulting Hacks, just one of the series we feature here on the News at Nine. Here's a look at some of the others that we have. Tune in tomorrow night for an all new installment in our consumer series we call Money, It's Personal. Let's find out what is trending on our website, ksat.com, with Ivan Herrera today. Myra, thank you for having me. Three great trending stories for you today. The first one I want to tell you about is this really incredible student. She's a San Antonio teen who's been recognized by the New York Times. Oh, wow. So let me tell you a little bit about her. So her name is... Maria Fernanda Benavides. I had to pause for it because that was a really <laughs> long name. Uh, so she's a high school student from San Antonio and she was just one of the eight winners of the New York Times first personal narrative essay contest. So it's a really big deal. Wow. Yeah. So after that, so she wrote about an experience that changed her life, which is what the prompt was. And she said it was a speech competition that left her get this, speechless. <laughs> of course. Um, and so after that, she actually decided that she wanted to help more people, so she decided to publish her own book. Oh, wow. Yeah, so she is a teen who's already publishing books. She's more accomplished than I am, and she's <laughs> doing great stuff, so check out that story on ksat.com. So right is now. this a book about just kind of her... Ex yes, her experience. Her experience, yeah. how she wants to help other people. Exactly, and I don't want to give it all away, so check out that story right now. Max right. did a great job, so check it out. Okay. All right, next story... I want to give you some clues for this one. This is a huge deal because I love her. Give me a beat. 
Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Uh, All right, so of course, Janet. Yes. Janet Jackson, she's coming to San Antonio. Love her. I love her old stuff. I don't really know a lot of her new stuff. Yeah, same love here. Love that song. Um, what have you done for me lately? <laughs> uh, so she's coming to San Antonio in the summer. She's coming August 7th, and she's coming to the AT&T Center. Okay. But I'm telling you about it now because the tickets are going on sale on Thursday. So oh, wow. Gosh, get your tickets. so soon. Exactly. Okay. So this week, get them now while they're hot. Um, and she's Got coming it. because she's promoting her new tour. So it's called the Black Diamond Tour, and she's having an album also called Black Diamond. So it's going to be a whole new production, is what her team says, and it's going to be great from what I hear. So okay. excited to hear about Janet it. Janet and exactly. Ivan will be there. Yes. Uh, Janet, if you're hearing this, I'd love some tickets. <laughs> Thanks. All right, last up. I saved this story for last because I thought this was a really cool concept. So Netflix has been coming up with a bunch of crazy cool new shows. One of them is called The Circle. I keep telling everybody about I it. I have heard you talk about yes, this. Yes, I'm obsessed with it. I don't know the first I'm thing obsessed. about it. It's a social media competition, but this is not about that. This oh, is okay. about something okay. kind of similar though. So there's this new show, a new dating show that Netflix is coming out with, kind of a similar concept as The Circle, where everybody kind of is in their own little apartment in their own little pod, and they can only talk via like social media, like a social media kind of connection. Okay. But it's only within like the group. So it's kind of the same thing. So this show is basically you can only hear the person that you're trying to date, which is kind of odd. You don't know. It's kind of like a. Yeah. Is that that's sort of like an old school dating show you yeah. got the big barrier in yes, between yes. the two kind of you know? similar except they're actually living in a place so, oh, so yeah. this is all this is not like on yes. a set it's not a game show not at all yeah it's it's okay. very much like a reality show and it's called love is blind and some people have even gotten engaged so here's what oh. happened if you do get engaged Netflix says that those people have to meet face to face. They have to go on vacations like normal couples do. <laughs> and of course they have to live together and then start planning their wedding. So oh, wow. it is very, very much, you know, hit hit the ground running kind of stuff. But it, it sounds a lot like the circle. So if you're into the circle, this will be definitely All right. something. Another way love. to find love yeah, in 2020. So check it out on, on KSET.com. Okay. All that stuff. Thanks, Ivan. Thank you for having me. We'll be right back. Thanks so much for watching KSAT News at 9. That is all our time tonight. I'm Myra Arthur. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. Good night.